Hey friends, Kenji aka Numatanami here with a Panharmonicon standard list. If you've been watching my channel on Twitch with any uh, regularity, you'll know that I've been trying out some Panharmonicon lists, uh, especially Esper with Noxious Gear Hulks and the like. But uh, recently at GP Denver, a few pros, including Seth Manfield and uh, Pascal Maynard, took this particular list to uh, very good finishes, um, not top not top eights, but uh, top sixty fours uh, at the GP, and uh, <laughs> unsurprisingly, they've decided to add Smuggler's Copter to the list. But lots of nice Panharmonicon synergies, uh, just like the deck that I was running, Drowner of Hope and Eldrazi Displacer can go infinite with Panharmonicon, and then you have a ton of other value cards like Cloud Blazer, Reflector Mage, Sky Sovereign, Console Sky Sh uh, Flagship, Thraven Inspector, etc., etc. Uh, I've changed the sideboard just a little bit, but otherwise this is card for card the exact list that um, they were playing at the GP. So I'm going to go ahead and join a competitive standard league with this list, and let's see how we do. Stay tuned. Alrighty, here we are for the first match with the blue-white Panharmonicon list. We're going to choose to play first. And pretty poor hand here. Double Panharmonicon, only one land. If I had one more land, I'd happily keep this because then we'd have the old Thraven Inspector into Smuggler's Copter, but uh, with one land on the play, gotta, gotta go down to six and hope to find a better one. And it looks like we're gonna be going down to five here on game one. Not how we wanted to start, but eh, that's magic. Sometimes you mulligan into, well, these type of hands. I can't say that this is highly likely, but down to four we go. And this hand has just about as many lands as all of the other three combined. Um, going to go ahead and bottom up planes here and lead with Prairie Stream, say go. Opponent's probably going to put us on Blue-White Flash, and it looks like they are, in fact, on Blue-White Flash as well. Eldrazi Displacer is super good versus Flash, though, because of uh, the interaction of Displacer and Spell Queller. Looks like they have their Smuggler's Copter on turn two. Um, I think we're just going to lead with the Displacer here. We have three colorless sources in the deck, two um, Westville Abbeys and a Wastes. All right, Declaration and Stone being used on our Displacer. And I think I'm going to get greedy because we're so far behind. I think I'm just going to sack the clue and hope to hit an untapped land, which we did not. Um, if we had hit an untapped land there, I would have played the Glint Nest Crane afterwards, but opponent just jams, jams Gideon here, or even Spell Queller, yeah. We're not in the best of spots. Can't imagine this uh, matchup is particularly favored for the flat, or rather for the Panharmonicon list, but I can actually see it being okay. I think this is the time to just slam down the Panharmonicon while I can. Obviously, getting down Smuggler's Copter with Glint Nest Crane is great, but I think I would just want the uh, the incremental value that the Panharmonicon can give me. Of course, we might be running into plenty of things here. Notably, opponent on Avacyn Mana. Looks like they're not going to opt to play a creature pre-combat, so Spell Queller is going to jump in the Copter, which means we take a little bit less damage, but... Letting the opponent continue to beat us down with the copter is never a good thing. This is one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of this standard format. Um, one, I still don't think it's very diverse. Even following Denver, where top eight was, you know, a, a wide variety of decks, the top 64 still had predominantly Marvel, uh, that is to say, red green Marvel and blue white Flash. And, you know, even though the Marvel deck's not playing copter, copter is just played in, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what, 40% of decks, competitive decks. All right, let's lead with Copter here and see if they want to spell quell that. If they do, then we get to resolve our Glintness Crane for double value. That's fine. That, that, the, the Copter here for us was more bait than anything. Um, now, unlike the Panharmonicon list I was playing, this list does actually run, or does not actually run very many artifacts. I think there are only, what, seven or eight in the main deck, including three, pan, rather, four Panharmonicons and two uh, flagships. 
Oh wait, no, that's not true. We have four copters. Four copters, four panharmonicons, and two flagships, but overall, not too many. So we had another panharmonicon in the smuggler's copter there, not too great. Really looking to find another land for this cloud blazer sitting in our hand here. Alright, this time the opponent is going to pre-combat a spell. Ooh, always watching main deck. Haven't seen that too much. Uh, I know some lists are starting to play that more and more, but always watching um, something more of a sideboard card I've seen from these decks. I'm going to go ahead and just jump here. Can't afford to really take 8 and then lose to just a, a next turn reflector mage or whatever. Now remember, this is our mulligan to 4, so I wasn't uh, wasn't baking, banking on this hand to win the game, but... Alright, discards a port town and a stasis snare. And let's hope to draw an untapped land. Alright, that's not bad. I do get to draw four cards and gain four life here, um, provided the opponent doesn't have a spell shrivel. Okay. Not the worst there. We are starting to come back around, but I think it's a little bit too late now. With the double copter and the spell queller, unless I can rip... Ah, uh, no. Displacer doesn't even do it because I don't have any colorless sources. Alright, there's a Gideon. They're going to go ahead and make a knight token there. And I imagine we're going to be taking a swing for eight more damage via copters. Now, we do have some nice things that we can do here. Um, double Reflector Mage bounces all of the opponent's creatures and gives me a Smuggler's Copter. 4, 8, 11, but... I think we still have to just chump here. Alright. Ooh, Sky Sovereign is also a pretty nice hit. Or rather, it would have been if the opponent didn't have uh, always watching. I'd be able to potentially kill some things. But I think we have to go with the double cloud, or rather the reflector mage play here. Bounce all of the opponent's creatures. Bounce, bounce. And so now the opponent's going to be able to play these Spell Quellers. Oh wow, they're going to crew it? Oh my. I kind of like that. Wow, now I can actually bounce that other smugg Smuggler's Copter too. Because I think the opponent was under the assumption that I might be able to get rid of this Spell Queller and get my Copter back, but mine would still have Summoning Sickness as well, so... My opponent made a little misstep there, and uh, we're actually going to get a bounce. An extra creature here, one of them being their Copter. I was actually going to be dead to just any creature that they drew besides a spell queller because they'd be able to make a creature, crew one copter, and then crew the other one as well. Oh, that's not true. I would have had I would have had the copter on my battlefield to chump block one thing, but you know what? We're not actually looking too terrible now. We've gotten a lot of value here. I like I can play Cloud Blazer next turn, which gets around the spell quellers. I can also play Sky Sovereign, which gets around spell quellers. All right, looks like they're going to main phase something here. Oh, they might have been trying to main phase their spell queller, but of course they can't do that because of the mage. So two spell quellers are the known, as well as a smuggler's copter. Uh-oh, looks like they're uh, doing some, some work on the roof. If you hear some drilling sounds, that's what that is. I apologize. If you don't hear it, then just pretend I didn't say anything. Now, the question is, do I want to chump here instead of going to three? It's actually pretty tempting. Hmm. I'll let them loot first. Okay, they just got a port town. And you know what? I think I am going to go ahead and block here. Because Smuggler's Copter is on attack or block. So I can actually get rid of an unnecessary spell here and dig a little bit deeper, even though mine does not survive. Six, seven. So I think we're going to discard another copter. Keep the land. We actually 
kind of want to draw lands here. And we'll see what the opponent wants to do. Now they very, they very well, Mel, excuse me, they very well might just pass with double spell queller open. And that does appear to be the case. All right, we drew one part of the combo, which is the Drowner of Hope. Unfortunately, I still don't have a colorless source for any Eldrazi Displacer I draw. Also, I don't have the Eldrazi Displacer. So, anything that costs less than five is out of the question here. But what we can do is play out the Drowner of Hope. And we can actually kill Gideon. We can go to combat with our Reflector Mages. Although this is a little bit risky, because the opponent can flash in both Spell Quellers. And then I can tap the Spell Queller, tap a Spell Queller, and then I would need to tap another Spell Queller. Or rather, the Smuggler's Copter that they crew. So I would be sacking three of my Eldrazi Scions to get rid of Gideon. And I'd be tapping both of my Reflector Mages. I'd be left with a Drowner of Hope. And a Scion. Maybe that's actually risky. Because then I also died as to the Smuggler's Copter. On the following attack if I don't... Hmm. Interesting. Another play that I could do here is... Play Sky Sovereign out. I could play Sky Sovereign out after this Drowner um, and shoot Gideon for six. That's also not terrible. That's interesting. I do So tap out for Sky Sovereign, shoot Gideon for six. I lose to a Stasis Snare then. Because I'd be able to crew my, my Sky Sovereign. Hmm. They've already discarded one stasis snare, though. That's That seems really greedy. I could just pass you with Drowner of Hope. I think I might do that. And kill the Gideon next turn. Let it, let it produce another token this particular turn. Also, with all of these Scions... Now, I am going to be sacking a few on the opponent's turn. But with all of these Scions... Oh, they had the stasis snare, so I'm glad I didn't go for it then. Um, but that means I am just dead to Copter plus Spellcaller here. All right, well, for a mold of four, that was surprisingly decent. Um, we're going to bring in the Fragmentizes for the Copters and the Stasis Snares. What else do we want to bring in? Maybe Spell Shrivels? Negate seems good versus the Gideon. Sky Sovereigns are so good versus the opponent's tech. That's like the number one card we want to find. Um, I can probably shave a Panharmonicon. And Thought Not Seer is not particularly splendid. We want to find room for all three of these, so I need to cut two more cards. Definitely want the Stasis Snares, and the Glint Nest Cranes are surprisingly decent. They they block Spell Quellers and a bunch of the other uh, smaller creatures from the uh, Blue-White Flash deck. I might cut one Cloud Blazer and maybe... Maybe a Drowner? I like Drowner because it gets around most of their counters except for Spell Shrivel, though. Oh, we also want to bring in another Displacer, don't we? Displacers are just too good. Yeah, I think if I were to change the deck list, I would probably add some more colorless sources, even though that seems a little bit sketchy. God, I almost want to go down to two Panharmonicon, but I'm not sure that's correct. All right, let's cut one Drowner, one Pan. Go like this. And ship this back for uh, Game 2 versus Blue-White Flash. Where we are going to play instantly. We're going to play again. And not a great hand, but I'm going to keep it. Remember, last game we mulliganed to 4, and surprisingly we stabilized for a little bit. 
the opponent draw the opponent's draw was a little bit slow so hopefully uh hopefully their draw is a little bit slow here as well because double cloud blazer is not doing me many favors the nice thing is because i have a westvale abbey in hand getting a plains here is not the worst because we already have our colorless source for when we need it All right, let's see the copter. Oh, a selfless spirit, of course, that's fine. Displacer, not a bad draw here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just run out this displacer. If they wanna use a declaration in stone or a main phase. Um, stasis there, I'm okay with that. All right, there indeed is the stasis snare, and we'll probably be taking two damage. Remember, we do have fragmentizers in the deck, so I'm actually going to sack a clue main phase if I don't draw anything relevant. All right, well, we can still stack the clue main phase, which is nice. Um, Wait a minute, no. We want to... We want to actually glint, ne glint nest first in case I hit copter. Nice. Okay, perfect. Gonna play our land. We can attack for one. And we're looking for one more land. Cloud lasers are quite resilient versus the blue-white flash deck. That is to say, they are not countered easily. And, of course, the turn four Gideon. As you do. As you do. Uh, we can actually threaten to kill Gideon, though. Which is nice. Alright, so I think I'm going to start here by sacrificing this clue. If we find a white source to stasis near the selfless spirit, uh, we can kill Gideon. If not, then I can just Thraven Inspector. That was stupid. I shouldn't have played Thraven Inspector. I should have went for the loot first. Oh well. Mistakes are made. Attack Gideon. I would like to draw and discard. And we don't need this Thraven Inspector number two. So now we can play the land post combat and then uh, sacrifice the clue. Alrighty, not bad. We might be taking a bit of damage here from Gideon. Silly thing is that you can stasis near Gideon. All right, opponent on five mana now. Well, I mean, I think we're in pretty good shape here. Although Westvale Abbey not really doing me any favors. Pretty risky to create Normandal <laughs> versus the Flash deck. All right, looks like they're not going to up Gideon, and they're just going to create another token here. So I get hit for two. They make another token. And we're going to see the infamous pass. Go ahead and sack my clue end of turn. All right, drew another land. And another land after that. So let's throw a little inspector in this copter. Now this might not be Avis, and they could just have another stasis snare of something, of course. And I'm just going to attack Gideon with the smuggler's copter and nothing else. We want to leave the crane back to threaten the night allies. All right, let's loot, and I'm going to discard that second abbey. Actually, you know what? I should have discarded the planes because the Westville Abbeys themselves aren't um, aren't legendary, and so that would have given me a second colorless source for if I draw another displacer. All right, so the unsurprising Avacyn, we go ahead and stasis snare it. We get to eat the Gideon, which is of course lovely. 
play a planes and uh, pass with the negate open. So now this game is really turning the tides, or has really turned the tides in our favor. Opponent has three cards in hand. I'll probably be able to play Cloud Blazer and hold up negate next turn. Now if the opponent just passes here, that would be interesting. I think I'm going to go ahead and get to go for the double block. I don't see why this would be a bad play. Opponent's trading one of their 2-2s two for my 1-2. Just another pass, okay. Well, that was an excellent draw. So I get to actually do this pre-combat. Because that way, if they do have an Avacyn, I can just flicker it. And if they want to instead spell quell my Displacer, then I can... Uh, then I can play a Cloud Blazer. All right, so let's jump in the copter, go to combat. Also, if the opponent tries to stasis snare one of my creatures, I can flicker it, provided it's not the Displacer itself. This does smell like another Avacyn, though. Hmm. And I don't really? Want to have to use my displacer this turn. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to pass here. I'm going to hold open my displacer and negate. I think that's better. Alright, no plays. So it's possible they didn't even have it. And in fact, it's likely that they didn't have it if they didn't do anything, but I don't see any rush. Um,. We completely dominate the board. And I say no to fumes. And that should lock it up. Well, that's not true. They could have another fumigate, but end of turn, we're going to kill their knight. Shoot another copter, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play the cloud blazer here. Cloud Loser can jump in the Smuggler's Copter. Give me some more cards to choose and discard from. Attack the opponent. Let's go ahead and loot. And I'm going to get rid of this third Smuggler's Copter that we have. Get the opponent down to 10 and pass. Kind of regretting discarding that uh, second Westvale Abbey, but yeah, there you go. Lock that one up. It was basically our Smuggler's Copter that did most of the work there. We got it down before the opponent, and they just didn't have much interaction. So let's run this back and hope again that we don't have to mulligan <laughs> to four as we did in game one. All right, game three versus blue-white flash. Opponent mulligan, and we're going to keep our hand. Even though we don't have an untapped land for this turn one inspector, we have good mana and good sideboard cards, so that's, that's going to push me over the top into just keeping this hand. All right, so I can actually go Evolving Wilds, get a Plains... And then I get to play Island, and then both of my Prairie streams will be untapped. Selfless Spirit. I was hoping that was going to be a uh, Copter there. I would happily just fragmentize it. Alright, let's play our Thraben Inspector. Island, and say go. It's going to bash us for two, and pass the turn. Alright, let's play our Prairie stream, and... I'm going to go ahead and attack with the Inspector here. Because if they want to flash in their Spell Queller, then they're losing value. And I'll just pass after that. We have our clue that we can crack end of turn. And it looks like the opponent's a little bit pinched on uh, blue sources. Which is not entirely too relevant currently. Since most of the cards that they run are white, but... Hmm... So if you're the opponent, do you just jam Gideon here? You've seen the gate for me the previous game. Would certainly make sense. <laughs> Alright, opponent in the tank here. <sighs> I'm hoping that they just go for something 
not entirely relevant, and then I get to jam Panharmonicon, and then Panharmonicon into either Cla Cloud Blazer or Sky Sovereign is just brutality. Someone must have a lot of options. Although I can't imagine too... It's probably just weighing the pros and cons of trying to jam a Gideon here. And well, for us, we know that they don't... Or we don't want them to play it. Alright, I'll pause the video here while they're uh, tanking. All right, opponent has decided to go to attacks first, where I will be taking two damage. Falling down to 16, and just another selfless spirit. Okay. Those are problematic in some degree, or to some degree. Wow, okay, double copter is a nice draw, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to be happy here to, to jam the panharmonic on. Hope this doesn't get negated. Which it did. Okay. And now we're kind of in a rough situation. If the opponent just goes for Gideon here, then I'm going to be very, very sad. If they don't have anything that's great... There's Big Daddy. And now they have a 2-2 two -two token as well. So I can play Sky Sovereign out, but it, it doesn't do too much. It can shoot like a Selfless Spirit, but then I can't even crew it. Um, I could go for Smuggler's Copter plus Glintness Crane. I feel like I'm going to be taking a lot of damage from the Gideons, though. I think the Glintness Crane plus the Smuggler's Copter might be the best bet. Because the Smuggler's Copter can hold off the Selfless Spirits. Wow, a third one. <laughs> Normally that wouldn't be too bad, but... That is uh, quite a few. Quite a few copters. Fifth land from the opponent slammed down. So it looks like the opponent did have the uh, Gideon the previous turn, and they were just weighing. I think they made the correct move. Two drop plus countering Panharmonicon. Really not what I wanted to see. And things are going to get a little bit sketchy here. If they have an Avacyn, but this game isn't too awful. The game plan is to crew the copter with an inspector. Glintness Crane already blocks both selfless spirits, which is why I played it as well. Like, we have two good creatures for their flyers. The problem is Gideon. And, of course, that's <laughs> something that can be said of many standard games. Eh, the problem's Gideon. Alright. So they could have Avacyn, of course, because they just hit their fifth mana. They could have Stasis Snare. Um, they could have a Negate. Looks like the opponent's going to go with the Emblem of Gideon. I like that play a lot. It makes both Selfless Spirits scary. Ah, and they have a third Selfless Spirit. Wow. Okay, one card in hand, though. So that's not the worst. So we'll crew here. Um, I'm not going to chump with the Glint Nest Crane just yet. So I'm going to crew it with the, the Crane. Go to blocks here, offer the trade. And I am going to chump, I believe, one. Pilgrim's Eye. Hmm. That's actually not terrible. I think we can discard a Copter here. So hopefully we're trading with the Selfless Spirit while falling down to 9. I have a few lines that I can go with next turn. I can just Pilgrim's Eye into Copter. I can Glintness Crane number 2 into Copter. I could Cloud Blazer, which is also not terrible. I could just jam the Sky Sovereign and shoot a Selfless Spirit. A lot of actual decent lines here. 
Interesting. Interesting for sure. Oh. I don't really want to run into another negate. Pilgrim's Eye plus Copter is oh, really, really tempting, but so is Cloud Blazer. <sighs> kind of mana hungry with this hand. Now, if they draw another Gideon and Emblem, then their Selfless Spirits become four threes. Which is not great for me. Hmm. I think I'm going to jam the Sky Sovereign here and try to shoot a Selfless Spirit. I think that leads to the best follow-up turns. Also, it plays around a Spell Queller. No attacks here. We're probably going to end up chumping. And especially if they have a Spell Queller as the last card in hand, then I have to leave it back. Yeah. And this is the pivotal turn. We're going to have to chump, go down to six. And hope the opponent didn't draw anything. They did just pass, though, which is... A little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, helpful. Now remember, I need three power to crew this. So I think we're actually just dead here, aren't we? Ugh, that sucks. That is unfortunate. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I can do here. It might have been correct to Cloud Blazer last turn and just not play around something like that. Because all three of their creatures are lethal. And I don't think there's any way I can get out of this at this point. I can, like, play Pilgrim's Eye, play Copter, Crew Copter, which crews console flagship. But that just kills one of their creatures. And I have no blockers. Um, I can't play three flyers this turn. I think we are dead. I think we're dead, Jim. It was that negate on our Panharmonicon that really got us. <laughs> well, we did draw all four copters this game. Reflector Mage off the top would have done it, though. Reflector Mage would have been pretty good. But as it stands, I do not think there is any way to survive, so. GG's Blue-White Flash, and we are down 0-1. Let's go to the next match.